Am I the highest on the Bears? Wait, what? Yeah. Hold up. What NFC North, man. I thought that I would be a little bit higher on them, to be honest. But to you know, by all regards, they talk about Eberflus. Would you say the other day that they had him as like Coach of the Year or something like that? And yeah, they, and yeah the he's odds, like he the highest odds to be. He has the highest odds to. Uh, Will we consider this a win for him though? No. Nine and eight missing the playoffs. No. Wait, nine and eight missing the playoffs is not a win for this Bears team. Oh, I thought you meant for wait. Him having an over five hundred record would be a huge jump having for an the over Bears. Over five hundred record, yeah, you would be coach of the year for the Bears. Even at Soar's record at eight and nine, they would be coach of the year. Not even at <laughs> Dodd's record at seven and ten. <laughs> they won seven and ten last year. Well, that's fair. But okay, um, like with the rookie quarterback though, I, I think yeah. they gotta make the playoffs for him to win head coach of the year. That's All gonna right, be so a big if they get if they are if they're at eight and nine or above five hundred, bro, it's a lock for coach of the year. Unless Name somebody last... just goes, unless somebody just goes seventeen and zero and just has averages like in forty five points a game, then okay. yeah. Let me ask you this: Name the last coach of the year who won it. I I don't know. I'm asking who went who missed the playoffs. I don't know. I can look it up. I gotta can remember. I don't even remember who won Coach of the Year last year, dog. Last year is a playoff coach, I believe. They always go based on like one of the best records. Uh, Jim Mora. What year? For those, who I don't know. know. He was a, he was the coach for the Saints and the Colts. You kidding me? That guy. Playoffs. Playoffs. Oh, I know who you're talking about. I'll yeah, just, I bet he you was the, the, he was the, the only playoffs. one. You yeah, kidding he was me? Dable was um, in the playoffs. I mean, Dable was in the playoffs. Yeah, were the Browns All in the right, playoffs so, last year? Wait, were the Browns in the playoffs last year? Oh, uh, were they? I don't think they were. Playoffs. No, they weren't. So Kevin Stefanski last year. Oh, boom. Yeah, next. Did. No, wait, wait. No, they were. They Hold were. on. Two thousand twenty-three. I feel the playoffs. Yeah, they were. They lost to Houston first round. The Joe Flacco led team. Yeah, uh, that's what that it was. was. All hype. Yep. That's yeah, why. That was, the, that was a snooze. Nice try. <laughs> but like I said, playoffs is going to matter for Coach of the Year. All right. So in a, right in a, now, with a rookie, with a rookie quarterback, and a it, with a rookie quarterback on the Bears team that has sucked for years, bro. People. So we, when we talk about the Bears Chicago anymore. Bears, obviously we got to talk about that they got Caleb Williams drafted as their quarterback. Uh, DeAndre Swift comes over. My boy Roshan Johnson and also, Khalil you, Herbert nice are in that backfield. With me. Uh, DJ Moore. Yes. Keenan Allen. Velas yes. Jones Jr. Hopefully he gets some uh, nah. gets some reps this year. Roma Dunze is there. Tyler Scott from the University of Cincinnati, I believe. Right? That's what Tyler Scott went to school. Cole Komet. Gerald Everett. Mercedes Lewis, that's a deep tight end room. Mercedes Lewis is just there for motivation. It don't and matter rocking. having and having rocking. a and having a guy depth like that is depth, yeah. my guy. Dude, I yeah. know Mercedes Lewis. The, our sideline got hyped every time he touched the ball, even if it was for <laughs> one yard. He Darnell Wright, Tevin Jenkins, and Braxton Jones a move for leadership, and I like it. Darn all right, Tevin Jenkins, Braxton Jones being on that offensive line is great. Um, yes. Javon Dexter, Montez Sweat, TJ Edwards, Tremaine Edmonds, Jalen Johnson, we talked about him, top five cornerback, put, him, put some respect on his name, Jaquan Brisker, Kevin Byard comes over after his stint with the Eagles, Tyreek like Stevenson him. up and coming, and our boy Kyler Gordon. Is out there as well with my boy Noah Sewell as a linebacker. Which, by the way, and shout out to Tyreek Stevenson. Dude came out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. He did not put up that much of a performance in the Senior Bowl, yeah. and even like throughout all the year, that was a that was a shock. I also keep not keep. no. Go ahead. Hey, what were you gonna say? Continue. No, what were you gonna say? No. no, go ahead. What were you gonna say? <laughs> um. And then fourth rounder Tory Taylor punter, right? Um, so they've they've <laughs> yeah. obviously got some they've obviously mean? got some pieces on their team to make a run. I just think they're too young, too inexperienced right now to put together a solid season. Now look, um, 
that's pretty much what everything came down to for me, you know, across the board. Know. Now, when I when I looked at the schedule, some notable ones that I had them losing to, and it's they got a tough start to their season. Yeah, even though do. how much did I do like the Titans this year? I think they get a win on them, and that's positive. But two negatives back to back. The Texans, I don't care who the Colts have it at quarterback, they still get a win. And then the Rams. Wait, the Colts get the win or? Yeah, I gave the Colts the win. I okay. gave the Colts the loss there. Um, I don't care who they have at quarterback, Hayden. That 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 team is too damn good. They can kill. That team is too damn good. It's um, good, yes. And Shane Steichen is their is their head coach. Yeah, they win in that game, man. <laughs> um, and then back to back wins for them going into the bye against the Panthers and the Jaguars. So <laughs> we agree on the Jags. <laughs> And then I just think they, you know, oh. they take a couple wins when they shouldn't yeah. in the NFC North. I think they get a win over Green Bay. Stop I it. think they get, no, I no, actually I have Green Bay winning both games. I was about to um, say, bro, it has been ten straight. They have not beat us since before COVID. No, I have all three teams in their division beating them twice. So so it's saying so, so I had the Vikings, the Lions, and you know, Green Bay beating them twice. So that's, I, I mean, so it's just so a tough year for them. It, they take an early bye week, and it's just rough for the rest I'm of the just year. Saying, their best chance versus the North is going to be Thanksgiving Day versus Detroit. History has yeah. proven themselves, as Sora mentioned last year when Detroit lost to Green Bay on Thanksgiving. Y'all motherfuckers <laughs> didn't want to listen to the full moon. I'm just saying, dog. Hey. I had us beating Detroit there too. The Lions don't perform. Well, you're biased. I had reasoning. The moon was my reason. <laughs> the moon was mine. The fact that no. they never perform well on Thanksgiving. The fact that Green Bay is started going hot versus the Chargers. Well, reason why I had them winning that too. But for me, for the Bears, I like what they did this offseason. The biggest issue still for me a little bit is that D line besides Montez. What I want to see a little I was hoping they would add a little bit more. But overall, that's still a very good defense. That was a huge piece of their great end of the year last year for the Bears. And then of course, Caleb Williams coming in. We cannot deny the greatness that he can bring to that team. The biggest thing for me is he gonna play like himself or play like Patrick Mahomes. That's gonna be the biggest thing for me with Caleb Williams heading into this year. The weapons are there with DJ Moore, Roma Dunze, and Keenan Allen being added, and then a very deep tight end room with Cole Clement, Robert Tunyon, Mercedes Lewis, and a few others. And then of course as well, you have a good secondary with at safeties, and then of course Jalen Johnson, a top five corner there. So they, I like their team. I just think they're they gotta just improve a little bit more before they're ready to take the next step. But this is a huge step for the Bears in the right direction. Oh, 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 allergic to saying good stuff. Anyways, a a good step in the direction for the Bears. I think they're going to be nine and eight. I think they're going to be borderline playoffs, but I think it's going to be. I think they're going to get eliminated from how good the NFC is going to be this year. But I think next year, depending on how they do in the offseason, it's going to they can make the playoffs and even make a deep playoff push. Ugh. Mm. Anyways, someone please go before I. I gotta go. Ugh. Anyways. Um, listen, this is the best that the Bears have ever set up one of their quarterbacks. They got there. Everybody already knew that they were drafting Caleb Williams. They went yeah. out and they got Keenan Allen, who just came off of arguably one of, if not his best seasons at his old age. They got a young wide receiver in Roma Dunze who they can be able to start working on that connection. And you have DJ Moore right off the bat solid trio at wide receivers. Uh, you got mm -hmm. Cole Komet back there. You've got... What is happening here? Hold up. Sorry. You have Gerald Everett as well backing up. So that's a good one too right there. O-line has looked a lot better than we're used to. DeAndre Swift, Roshan Johnson, uh, Khalil Herbert, good three running backs right there. Uh, DeAndre Swift, you know... Didn't have a thousand yards until he got to Philly. He just came off of his best season. So right now you can argue that he's in his prime. Thanks. Uh Roshan Johnson, second year, I think backing up DeAndre Swift. I think that's gonna be 
kind of close to what they uh, he experienced with at Texas. Um, I almost read the fullback name. The yes, the biggest problem is defense. I think Javon Dexter is going to take a next step up. I mean, he yes, not a lot of sacks, but ten quarterback hits as kind of as just a rookie. Still really good for your defensive line. Montez Sweat's going to help. The linebackers, TJ Edwards, Tremaine Edmonds. That's going to work out great. Jalen Johnson, again, I think top corner, top five corner, um, coming off of his amazing year that he had. Contract extension now on the way. Tyreek Stevenson surprised the hell out of me. I did not think that he was going to be that good. I'm not saying that because he went to Miami. I just did not see it at all. And Apparently overnight, he just put it all together. Um, you know, Kevin Byard, you can hope that veteran presence that can help. Um, can't really judge off of what he did at Philly because just that entire team collapsed. So he's a bit of a question mark. Jaquan Brisker, young safety, good safety. Keep uh, his name out your mouth, boy. Okay, shut the hell up. Um, <laughs> I just talked nice. I have to say something, okay? Okay, it's my turn. Uh <laughs> Jaquan Brisker, I think that's going to be a great duo at safety. Kyler Gordon, again, just at the slot. I think for a young team that has worked well to set up their young quarterback, and they went seven and ten last year, even you know with Tyson Badgett in there, you know with the shell of Justin Fields, you know the quarterback carousel over here. I think they can improve to get those two extra wins to get them at eight and nine, maybe nine and eight. Who knows? It just, it, it all just depends. The schedule is rough at the beginning. Yep. But after the bye, you start facing some of the younger teams. Again, you've got Carolina, which is before the Bible, you know, you got Carolina. They're still young. Um, I don't know what Hayden's, I don't know what Hayden's talking about with them beating Indy. I don't care who's that quarterback there. Uh, you know, they face after the bye, they face Washington and New England. Also young quarterbacks. Who knows what Arizona is going to look like? Um, but then, you know, shortly after that, we get to week 13. Detroit, San Fran, Minnesota, Detroit, Seattle, and then Green Bay to end it off at week 18. It's just a tough stretch. If they can come out swinging on the early season, you can hope that they can keep building momentum. It just, I don't know. It just it depends on how quickly... Caleb Williams can turn into that guy that everybody wants him to be. Um, but if they want, if they want uh, success and, you know, a record above 500, they got to come swinging out the gate and they got to come swinging out hard. I'm just saying that momentum fell, fell flat in their face. Week 18 last year. That was great. Well, the Roshan Johnson thing, I, you know, obviously I agree with, I mean, Roshan Johnson breakout year incoming. I can hope so, man. I, I'm. Uh, was I the only one that thought that Roshan over his career might be better than Bijan? I think I was I the only one that said that. No, I think but, Sword did. I don't remember if I did. I didn't. He might I have. Was, I was. I'm I think I can. I think I can see it, but it just depends. I mean, again, with DeAndre Swift, I don't know. It just depends on their situation. If he's going to be a backup the entire time, then. Because they didn't really use him much last year, so we didn't we didn't yeah. really get a fair sample size. I'm I think it really didn't... comes down to how healthy this this rushing game is going to be. Because yeah. Khalil Herbert has his issues, and obviously DeAndre Swift. This is his second stand up there in the NFC North, and it was not good when he was with the Lions because he was always hurt. But we'll see what happens, man. Uh, Khaleesi, I don't know if better than Bijan, but both will be really good. I thought he was the better open field runner than than Bijan. Bijan's whatever his second level speed was just not there. But again, I had him in my I top just, five, and everybody acts like I I said that he was trash, which is hilarious. I just I think um, I just don't think we got a fair sample size of really either of them. Again, you had Arthur Smith who would use which granted i still thought that they didn't need to draft Bijan. i mean they had cordero they had um algier like they already had running backs i don't think they need them but you know arthur smith rotated all three of them and then the bears just never used roshan johnson so we got more of a yeah. sample size for for Bijan. we didn't really get much for uh roshan so it's it's going to be interesting 
It will be. I think he still will be good. I think him and DeAndre Swift will be a good one-two duo if they use Roshan, though. They have to use him this year. I kept that right. motherfucker on the bench all year in fantasy, waiting for my opportunity. Then running back injuries started happening. I was like, this is the week. This is the week. It was not the week. It was not the week. It was never the week. All right. Yeah. What's the next team? Uh, well, 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 hold up, <laughs> sir. I, Maybe I had something else I dude, need to say. Yeah, dude is just oh. impatient just to get to Green Bay. That's crazy. <laughs> Even though they're not going to be first, but that's just crazy.